Hi, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for taking time to, to listen to me. There has been a few comments that I have seen in response to the Prime Minister's uh, suggestion that Barbados, under the government of Barbados, will be doing a program to assist the thousand most vulnerable families in Barbados. Some people have suggested that it is not enough, and I feel as if I must offer some explanation as to the complexity of the issue, the wide span of our response, and the nature of the response. First of all, the government of Barbados must let you know that when we say we are assisting a thousand families, we are estimating on average a family of about eight persons. Some families have 15, some families have two. So that's about 8,000 persons to begin with. I feel also that I must share with you that the government has started a number of social programs. So we're not suggesting that we are going to do this program and replace all of the other programs. You are aware that we've already started the Adopt a Family, the Household Mitigation Project, that gives some of the poorest in Barbados $600. We've already expanded the service to welfare. And currently, the Prime Minister had already mandated that we do a deep dive into the processes at welfare. Why is it taking so long for people to be able to access the services of the department? Why are some landlords complaining that they're not being paid on time? So it is a comprehensive kind of, of um, approach. The other thing is that we are very much deeply engaged in the process of restructuring the Ministry of People Empowerment. When we amalgamate the social services, it is clear that persons will have a wider scope of benefits. There will be less uh, inefficiency in the system so that persons with disabilities will get more services, persons who were traditionally on welfare, the persons who are considered um, older in Barbadian society, and the, the residents and the persons who visit the child care board. So there are all of these services that we are currently addressing. So I say to you that there's not only 1,000 families that we are assisting, we are assisting all Barbadians. But it is clear to me that in these circumstances, these very difficult circumstances, Unless we do something now for the most vulnerable, for the poorest of the poor, for those who these circumstances are the most difficult, those thousand families, that we will miss the ball. And I feel it is incumbent on this government to show that we do care by reaching those persons who are in need. And I've heard other suggestions as well that we should scrap this and think about universal basic income. It's a conversation worth having. But a basic income does not respond to multidimensional poverty. And when I say that it is multidimensional, multidimensional means that you're dealing with issues of education, you're dealing with issues of housing, you are dealing with issues of health, you are dealing with a number of issues that a program that seeks to address these issues must respond to. So in the Thousand Family Program, we're not only offering assistance, there are some Barbadians, for example, who do not have an ID card. So the first step is to make sure people have an ID card, personal identification. We then go on to deal with the issues in education, help the persons and the families with books, make sure somebody is there to help the children with their homework. Uh, we go through the process of counseling because a lot of the issues in families are family dynamics. How do you work with those families to settle some of the household issues that plague the family and prevent the family from being able to progress? And of course, we look at issues of employment and we look at issues of welfare distribution to make sure that they get a certain amount of income. It is a complex response. And it is only the first 1,000, but we have every intention of reaching the 7,000 or 8,000 families that we feel will fall into this category. It is also my view, my strong view, that Barbadians will come out and help. And that is why this program is called Each One Reach One. We like to say we're going in 50-50. I do something, you do something. I knew, for example, years ago when uh, in Barbados, I went around the pine with a trolley, just pushing, asking persons to make a contribution. And the people in the pine filled my trolley seven times because they felt they wanted to help the persons who were most disadvantaged. I feel genuinely that Barbadians will come out and help the government reach the most vulnerable. And as I would, I would want to reiterate, it is not only a thousand families that we are helping that through the welfare department and all of our other social services, we are helping those families and other families as well. I also feel that I must reiterate, I've heard the complaints in relation to gas. The government of Barbados already capped the taxes on, on fuel charges. So that at $80, persons don't pay VAT beyond that and the price of gas now per barrel is like $120. I know that it is still very difficult, but that the government has done something in cases where bigger countries have not done anything. I also know that at the recent social partnership meeting held just on Monday, 
that a commitment was made to review the cost of living and it is expected that by the 8th of July there is going to be further consultation and a report presented to how does the social partnership respond. But Barbadians understand this is a serious, serious time. This is a difficult time across the world and the government is doing a lot to be able to offer assistance. In relation to the restructuring of the Ministry of People and Empowerment, I feel that I also must say that we have not taken a political approach. That is why I feel if anyone in any political party has an idea, I would love to engage with them. If they ask me to meet under a tree, I will meet with them to go over the ideas because this is not about me or politics or the government. It is about the people of Barbados who need help. And so we asked, the Prime Minister was insistent really, that we should have a meeting and that we invite all of the former ministers of social transformation, social care, family. And so that invitation was extended to the members in the Democratic Labour Party. Um, we were able to have a meeting. At that meeting, Hamilton Lashley was present. I want to thank him. I want to thank Cynthia Ford. She came out and gave a wonderful contribution. Trevor Prescott also came forward as a former minister and Dennis Lowe as a former minister of social transformation. And there we engage in a conversation on restructuring, on how do we mind the business and attend to the business of the most vulnerable Barbadians. I must also say that I reached out then previously to the current president of the Democratic Labour Party and I asked him to send somebody to the meetings or that I would convene it at another time that is more convenient so that we could have a real conversation about moving the social agenda in Barbados. I am hopeful that at some point he returns the call as he promised so that we could have this conversation. But it is incumbent on all of us to do more. I feel that the idea of each one reach one, which is the idea behind the thousand families, is a good one. I am asking Barbadians to, to listen, to wait for us to give further detail and further facts, to, uh, to appreciate that we are not only doing a thousand families, we've increased welfare, we're doing a lot of other projects to make sure that everyone who is in need is able to get some assistance. But believe me, Unless we do something for the thousand most vulnerable people and families in Barbados right now, I feel as if we would have missed the ball. And I hope that people appreciate that is all that we are trying to do and that we will continue to do so in a confidential manner. This program, I should also say as I close, is built on a program where we help 250 families. Most people don't know this because it was done in a confidential manner. It was done in a way that gave people their dignity and their respect. And it's just to make sure that at the end of the day, we move people from a situation where they are dependent on the government to a point where they're independent of the government to a position where they can be interdependent to the point where they're giving back to other people. That is the kind of society that I hope we can live in at the end of the day. It is not political. This is not the end all of our game. And I do hope that people give the Thousand Family a chance and that at some point in the near future, I will go through a whole slew of programming that the ministry is doing to reform this country and to be able to best offer services to the most vulnerable. So I'm asking Barbadians to work with me, to give us the opportunity to deliver further, and perhaps very soon we can have a conversation where we engage in a back and forth and help us shape this, because it is not political. It is about the people. So I thank you very much.